In this video, I'll talk about a multifunctional WordPress plugin, Admin Site Enhancement. This plugin offers a lot of features that you can use for free. I'll talk about the use cases of some of the features for a regular WordPress user. I already have the plugin installed on this demo website. To install the plugin, you need to search with admin and site enhancement or you can search with admin and site and you can see the plugin here. When you activate the plugin, you will find the option under tools. Here you can see the enhancement option. It opens the dashboard for the plugin. Let's go through the features one by one. Under the content management, I see the first option is content duplication. When you turn on this option and save it, now when I open the posts page, when I hover over the mouse of any of the posts, I can see the new option duplicate. This option creates a duplicate of this page or post. This is useful when you quickly want to create a new page with the design of an existing page and just want to update the content. You see, this is duplicate. Now I can edit the content and keep the same design. The media replacement feature lets you replace any media in the library without changing the media in the page or post. When you have a published page with some images and you want to replace an image on the page, instead of editing the page to replace the image, find the image in the media library and you can replace this image here with this edit more details option. And here you see the replace media option. If you replace this image with another image, then you do not need to edit this post to replace this image here. Just replace all the images you want to update in the media library with this option, replace media. External permalink option provides you an option to redirect any post to an external link. You see here, it looks like a normal post on the website. When I click on this, it goes to the YouTube channel. Here in the post, I added the link for the YouTube channel under this external permalink option. Let's move on to the admin interface. Here I have an option to organize the admin menu. With this option, you can organize the menu here at the left. Sometimes we want to keep things handy. So instead of moving the pages up and down for the menus, you can arrange these and bring the most used menus at the top on the sidebar. So when I turn on this admin menu organizer, and here under this expand option, I can bring the pages after posts. I can bring the plugins after pages here. And when I save this, I can see here the posts and pages and plugins. The plugins and the pages were not here before. Under the login and logout option, I see the option last login column. When you turn this option on, here in the users page, you see it created a new column, last login. Currently, it doesn't have any data because I was already logged into the website. If I log out and log in, let's quickly check it. I'll just log in again. And when I go to all users and I can see the last login time here, you can see the last login time for all the users you have on the website. Under the custom code option, I found this insert head body and footer code useful. What this do is when you need to add some code from third party services, to the website like Google Analytics or some other services. They ask you to add the code to the head, body or to the footer on the website. Some of the themes support inserting code but if your theme doesn't have the option, you can use this feature to insert the custom code here. When you write a post in WordPress, it saves the versions of all the edits. Sometimes this number of revision can be a huge number and all of these are saved in the WordPress database. It can make the website loading slower. Under this optimizations tab, I see this option revisions control. When I turn this on and here I can set the limit for the revisions to 10 or 5, whatever you want. And I can enable this for posts only and save. So now the saved number of revisions in the database will be 5 for all the posts. It will keep the database clutter free. Let's check the last useful method. Under this Utilities tab, you see this email delivery. When WordPress send an email from the website, it uses a default email address and email configuration to send the emails. And the email address shows as WordPress at your domain.com or it uses the admin email of the website using the SMTP configuration of the hosting. Often these emails go to the spam. You can see here Gmail detected this email as a spam. You might have noticed this 
when you receive emails about the plugin updates or when you submit a new contact. So the best practice is to use an SMTP configuration to send the emails. In this send delivery option, you can set up a custom SMTP configuration. You can create a no reply email address on your hosting account and use the SMTP configuration provided by your hosting. Also, you can use a Gmail or Yahoo account in this SMTP configuration. I have several videos on SMTP configuration in the channel. Let's try to fill this email delivery information here. I'll use this email no reply at WP trial zone and I'll enable the force option here. Now I need to fill in the SMTP configuration. I'll just put the configuration here, TLS. I need to use the SMTP username and the password for the email. Now I'll save this. Now let's try to send an email. It says test email was successfully processed. Now let's check the email here. You see, I have received the email in this inbox and it is from no reply at WP trial zone. This way, all the emails from the website will not go to the spam folder. These were the useful features I found in this plugin as a regular WordPress user. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.